I've helped a million of you with your wild setups to maximize your performance in another highly requested topic, macros. So in this masterclass, I'll cover all your questions on screen. I will make you a wizard in terms of wild macros. I will assume you have zero knowledge and I will build you up such that you can code your own complex conditional macros used by world first raiders that allow you to use multiple abilities with just one keybind and macros that make you react way faster and all the other little known tricks and hacks that comes with macros. All parts of this masterclass is timestamped as per all my other guides. So bookmark the video, come back in the future if you need. All the macros in this video will also be available for easy copy and paste via the description. Let's start. First, the basics. Let's zoom through it. Type slash macro in your chat box to bring up the macro screen and this macro panel will appear. The difference between a general macro and a character specific macro is that general macros, they will be saved across all your characters. While character specific macros, just like the name suggests, will be saved only on that specific character. For the purpose of this video, we'll be creating macros from scratch. And I can bet with you, if you use any form of advanced macros that you copy and paste from some famous streamer or website, you will always see the first line is show two tip. What the hell is show two tip? So let me explain. I'm gonna to go to general macros. Let's start something brand new together. And we'll call this macro masterclass. And you can choose a question mark and you will understand why later. Because show tooltip literally means that depending on what you type beneath the show tooltip line, what your macro does, it would actually fill in what the icon is. The game would display the relevant icon. And that is why every well-written macro starts with show tooltip. All right, some more basic hacks here. So most people in their macro, if you're old school, would use slash cast and let's say a certain ability like crackling jade lightning. By the way, here's a pro tip. Just like how you link spells and items in game when you type macros, and you're gonna use any of these abilities and you don't wanna mistype or misspell, you can simply hold down the shift button on your keyboard and you left click on the spell and it instantly populates here. So that way you don't ever have to worry about misspelling and see what happens when I click save. You see that this basically macro instantly gets updated as the crackling jade lightning icon. And so if I drag it onto my action bar here, which is in the number one keybind, and I close my macros, click on this, I press one, it basically starts casting Crackling Jade Lightning, as simple as that. Now going back to this basic macro that we created, there's actually a more efficient way to code this, and it's actually to spell use instead of cast. Use is the exact same thing as cast, except it's one alphabet less, and it also can be applied to trinkets and items and whatnot. So for example, if I save this and I press one again, you can see I can still use Crackling Jade Lightning. I don't have to type slash cast, but if you ever encounter slash cast or slash use ability, it's the exact same thing. So that's basics. Now let's dive into the deeper end of the pool, the more advanced stuff. I just renamed the macro we made together such that it starts with A and that way alphabetically it's always at the first position and this way we can find what we created easily every time we open the panel. But let's dive into the advanced part and I'd like to talk about macro conditions now. And the case study we will use is a mouse over macro, by far one of the most common advanced macros that veterans of World of Warcraft would use. Now, conditions at its heart is what makes macros insanely powerful because you can combine multiple spells functions into a single keybind that activates under different conditions. So let's start with the entry level knowledge to conditions. To add a condition to a macro, you need to use the square bracket. So in this case, after I type slash use, I would open the square bracket as such. And what the square bracket says to the game is that, okay, if the condition inside this square bracket is true, then use Crackling Jade Lightning. However, because what is in the square bracket is currently empty, it means that it is always true. That's why when I click on one, you know, Crackling Jade Lightning still goes through. And now you might be asking, wait, how do I know what are the conditions that is available for me to use? What do I type in the square brackets? So this is a very good time for me to introduce a very good resource that I'll link in the description. It's basically to a wildhead article, it lists all the conditionals you can use. But there's only really a few common ones that people really touch. Specifically, I think these four highlighted are the most common. Harm, help, exist, dead. But you can see it goes on to be way more complicated and we'll talk about them in some specific examples later. So let's take for example, if I type in help, in this square bracket, this macro would no longer work 
because if you look at the reference I showed for that browser page earlier, help will only be a true condition when you're targeting an ally, not an enemy target, which in this case is the training dummy. So this same macro, if I now try and use it, hey, it doesn't work. You can see me clicking on one, it just doesn't work anymore because this condition is now false. So the game doesn't use Crackling Jade Lightning. Now, if I change help to harm, which means the condition is true when I target an enemy, in this case, the training dummy is one. Now you can see that when I press one, it works again. Right? So this is a quick demo of how conditions work in the bracket. The game checks for, is the condition true? Okay, if it's true, I then continue to use Crackling Jade Lightning. If it's false, I stop there. I do not do anything. And so I covered what conditions are. For us to do the mouse over case study, I need to introduce another concept to you. And this is also found on the same browser website that I brought up on screen that you can find in the description. And on the side, you see something called target modifiers. Now this is where macros get even more powerful because via your macro inside the square bracket, you can specify how are you modifying what target you are currently targeting in the game. Sounds like a mouthful, sounds hard to understand. Don't worry, we'll demonstrate it with the mouse over case study. But for now, just be aware that you will be able to pair up target modifiers with conditions. And together, that's a very powerful combo. The Wowhead article lists all the possible modifiers for target, and we'll go through all the important ones in this video. Now let's talk about a very specific target modifier, which is mouse over. And this is very, very important for advanced macro users. So similar to the website I showed you earlier, you can go add mouse over. And so when you add target modifiers, what most people would do is they would add in a condition to be comboed together with the target modifier. And the way you do so by adding conditions within the square bracket on top of a modifier is basically by using the comma. So in this case, I want it to be add mouse over and then I want to use the conditional that it exists. Then I click save. And if I test it out here, let's say I target myself first, right? You can see I'm currently targeting myself. If I mouse over one of these training dummies and I press one, you can see without switching targets, I'm actually able to cast via my macro on the training dummies. And you might be saying, wait, hang on, why must we have comma exist there? That's a good question. Hold your horses. I'll explain why in a bit. Before I cover that, I want to talk about how we can modify this mouse over macro to be even more helpful. So let's say you're fighting a boss and the boss has two different ads, or let's say it's a council fight. There's different bosses. Let's imagine all these four training dummies. They are the four council bosses, the four horsemen in Naxxramas. While you are targeting the first to just spare one GCD on the fourth, as you can see, I'm using Crackling Jade on the fourth, even though I'm targeting the first, as you can see from this blue aura over here. Now, some of you might have already noticed a problem with this, which is, hang on, your macro kind of sucks because it's so limited, it can only cast on mouse over. Because let's say I'm currently targeting this dummy, right? And my mouse is currently targeting, let's say the ground, mouse over on the ground. I press one, nothing happens. It doesn't cast Jade Lining on my current target. That sucks. That actually means that I need multiple binds for just crackling Jade Lightning. So how do you make it more flexible? This is where we introduce this principle to you in macros called having multiple conditions and also what the priority of the conditions are. And so what we do here is we come to the end of the first square bracket and then we add in another square bracket as such and we click save. Now this is where you need to understand how the game reads macros. It basically goes from left to right or top to down to find a condition that is true. And when it is true, it will then execute whatever ability you're asking it to do. In this case, Crackling Jade. Let's say my current mouse cursor is on the ground and then I press one, which is the macro keybind. The game reads the macro from left to right. First, it reads mouse over comma exist. Well, there's nothing mouse overing now. So the first condition is out, it has failed. Then it goes on to read the next condition, the next square bracket here, and it's empty. Oh, so this is now true. So I will cast Crackling Jade Lightning on my current target because I've not included any four target modifiers in the second square bracket. So the game executes the command that is the simple slash use crackling jade lightning, which is currently on my target. That is why even though my mouse over is currently on the ground and I press one, now the spell goes through. I don't have to have the mouse over on that specific um, unit frame in order for crackling jade to go through. And basically now you can have just a single macro for crackling jade that works with mouse over and without mouse over which is perfect. Okay, now this is where we come back to 
why do you need to add this comma exist? And it's good practice to have this whenever you have a target modifier. Because if you don't, the macro doesn't work. And let me explain why. So let's say I delete this comma exist and it's now just add mouse over and then another square bracket that's empty. See what happens. My cursor is currently on the ground. Now I'm gonna press what? It doesn't work. It says you have no target, but hang on. I have a target, it's right here. I'm targeting this dummy. Why doesn't this macro work? Because this goes back to priorities of the condition. The game reads the macro from left to right. And it says, oh, the first condition add mouse over. Oh yeah, he's mouse overing. He's mouse overing the floor. But mouse overing the floor is true in the game engine's definition because I am mouse overing something. It's just that it's not a target. It's not an enemy. I mouse over the floor. It's still a mouse over. That's good. And therefore it ignores the second square bracket. And so under this macro setup, it is executing the text use at mouse over crackling jade lightning, which is why it says you have no target because that's the command is executing. You need to add in the condition exist. Click save. And then the first condition would be false because mouse over currently on the ground has nothing existing. There's no unit there, nothing is existing. And therefore the game then defaults to the second square bracket, which is slash use crackling jade lightning. Just to help you crystallize this, imagine if I bring this second square bracket all the way to the front. Some of you might have already guessed what this would become. I'm currently targeting the first, I mouse over the fourth and I click my macro. Wait, hang on. Now it basically is casting on my first. What's going on? Because like I said, it reads from left to right. Now it checks the first square bracket and it says it's empty. Oh, it's true then. So I'm gonna do slash use cracking jade lightning on my current target. That's what the game is doing. And so the priority of the square brackets, they make a lot, a lot of difference. And that is why you see a lot of macros that you copy and paste from websites having this second square bracket in the later half, because this is basically an empty condition. It's always true. Okay, now I wanna talk about add mouse over macros because now you see how powerful it can be, right? I'm using it for DPS purposes, for enemy purposes, but this can be easily modified for allies. So let's say I change it to a hue, Vivify. Click save. Now I don't need any form of complicated add-ons like click that I need to basically download. And then through the click add-on, I can assign certain keybinds where if I mouse over a certain unit, I just press the keybind and it simply just casts on the unit without me switching targets, without me left clicking on the unit. You don't need those add-ons anymore. Mouse over does it. You can see once I click save and I use the macro mouse over myself, by the way, I'm still targeting the target dummy here, enemy by the way, but now I mouse over myself. I'm still targeting the dummy, but when I press one, I'm healing myself without any form of add-on. So mouse over macros as a healer, technically you can go across all your spells, set it up with a mouse over macro, just do it once and you never ever have to use any form of click add-ons to mouse over heal anyone, as simple as that. Now that you understand what priorities are from left to right, just know that earlier I mentioned that macros can also read it from top down and it's the same. Some macro writers that you copy and paste from websites or streamers, they basically use a top down way of writing macros, completely fine too. And don't worry, we'll cover some examples later. And by the way, just to be thorough, you can actually have multiple conditionals in the same square bracket. So currently it says comma exists. I can even be more specific and say comma harm. And what this does is that it basically specifies that, okay, not only must my mouse over target exist, but it must also be a harmful unit. So in this case, it works on the fourth because this is a harmful unit. Now imagine if I change harm to help instead. And now it basically says your mouse over must exist and it must be an ally. So if I try and mouse over the fourth and press one, it doesn't work anymore. It now goes to use crackling jade on the first unit because it reads the square bracket first, the first square bracket. And it says mouse over exists and it needs to be an ally. Well, in this case it's false because I'm mouse overing a target dummy. Then the macro then goes to the second bracket and it does, oh, empty condition. Okay, true. So use crackling jade lightning on current target. This is what I mean by you can have multiple conditions in the same square bracket by using multiple commas. So that's that. Now I want to introduce another layer of complexity. And this is when you want to have multiple abilities within the same macro that corresponds to different conditions. Let's say for some reason, I want this macro to be one where if I mouse over an enemy, 
it casts Crackling Jade Lightning. If I mouse over an ally, it casts Vivify, which is the monk's heal. All in one macro. This is where you need to use the semicolon. So this is what we do. We remove the second square bracket and over exist here, I'm now going to say harm, which means it needs to be an enemy in order to use Crackling Jade Lightning. I then go to the end of Crackling Jade. I press semicolon and now I enter the condition add mouse over exist and help. In this case, it will be then VV5. Then I hit save. Okay, now let's test the macro out. When I mouse over the fourth target dummy that I'm not targeting and I press one, it basically does cracking J. Now I'm still targeting the first dummy. And now if I bring my cursor over to myself, it basically casts Vivify. So that's what the semicolon does. It allows you to separate two abilities within the same slash use statement. And you can even make it more complex by adding another semicolon, this time around with an empty condition. So meaning this will always be true and the default action is to use crackling J lightning. So if I don't mouse over anything, let's say I mouse over this hut over here and I press one, what do you think will happen? The game will read this entire line of slash use and it goes, okay, it needs to be mouse over exist hum. Since he's mouse overing the hut, this is false. Um, he's also going to be false for the second condition because he's mouse overing the hut. Ah, the third condition. He is square bracket empty, condition true. So I slash use Crackling Jade Lightning on the first target I'm currently targeting, which is my current target. And this is what the semicolon means. It brings in multiple abilities into the same statement. Okay, now that I've introduced this semicolon to you, let's backtrack a little, talk about the top to bottom hierarchy and priority that I talked about earlier. And I'll give you a real example. So this is a Prot Warrior macro from Wowhead, from their Prot Warrior guide. And now you have the knowledge to understand what exactly is this trying to say. Let's go through it together, top down and left to right. The first thing is show tooltip charge. Then it goes slash cast. By the way, slash use is the same. I told you guys at the start. Slash cast target equals mouse over, meaning if your target is your mouse over and it's an ally and it exists, and your ally is not dead, you will then intervene the ally that you moused over, meaning you can mouse over the unit frame of your ally and you will intervene to your ally. And if this is not true, then it simply cast intervene. Now you understand what I mean. The game basically reads macro from left to right, top to down, as simple as that. Let's do another very important target modifier, which is add focus. And for the purpose of this demo, I will go into my key bindings. What I want to do is I will bind focus target. I'll bind it to alt middle button. And so I can always alt middle button to set this as my focus. And then I can move it back to the first target, but you can see this like diagonal nameplate here. That basically means that that is my focus target. By the way, stacking nameplates here is not activated for the purpose of this tutorial because I basically magnified the UI scale so you can see the macros properly. But if you folks are using my plater profile, stacking nameplates will work normally anyway. Just in case someone asks me in the comment section, like what's going on with your nameplates. Anyway, now that you have your focus set as the fourth, you can use add focus because earlier I talked about it too. Under target modifier, you can also use add focus, which targets the focus target. Without swapping off your current target. Again, a very long mouthful. Let me just demonstrate. So in this case, what I want to do is if I have a focus that exists and is a harmful, it use Crackling Jade Lightning. And if not, I just want the macro to cast Crackling Jade Lightning at my current target. So I'll save. Okay, so now watch where my cursor is. My cursor is currently on the ground. I'm currently targeting the first. I have basically focused the fourth. Okay, you know what? I'll demonstrate the third. I will focus the third. And you can see it's now my focus with the diagonal stripes. Okay, now I target the first again and I press one, which is the key value of the macro. Notice what happens. I will now use Crackling Jade on the diagonals, which is basically my focus. But if I type slash clear focus, and now it's no longer being focused, back to my macro, and I target the second one, press one, it now goes back to just targeting the second one because there's no longer a focus. So at focus does not exist. Therefore, first condition is out. Macro goes to the second condition, slash use Crackling Jade Lightning. Now, if you're sharp, you already know, based on the tutorial so far, I can make this macro even simpler. I don't even need the semicolon anymore. I just go here and I add a square bracket here. And so it will work in the exact same way. I press one and it's exactly the same, right? Remember you use semicolon when you have different abilities. But since it's the same ability, I can get away with using this way simpler. All right, now you have learned all these conditionals, target modifiers, how to combine different conditions, 
how does the game prioritize different conditions, reading from left to right, top to down? Now let's dive into even more useful examples. Since we're on the topic of focus, we cannot have a macro masterclass without talking about the focus interrupt macro, which is probably the most important macro when it comes to Mythic Plus. How does that work? It's really simple. So let's say we currently have four mobs in this pack that I'm tanking, okay? And these are the four mobs. I am currently targeting the second mob because the second mob is the most dangerous mob. It's let's say a melee target. It doesn't cast anything. However, I know this third mob is a caster mob. And if you download my playthrough profiles, it will be colored in pink. Those are the ones you need to interrupt. And it does a very dangerous cast that I need to watch out for to interrupt ASAP. However, I need to be focusing my DPS on the second one. So I want to be able to interrupt my focus, which is my third one, caster, without swapping off the second target. So the way you set it up is you use a focus interrupt macro. How does it work? You go slash use, add focus, exist harm. And then instead of crackling jade, you can go into monk and then you look for your interrupt, which is spear hand strike. So I can include spear hand strike. I can delete crackling jade lightning and save. What this does is it says, okay, if you have a focus, it exists and it's harmful, I will use spear hand strike on your focus. But if not, pressing this key bind will just do slash use spear hand strike on your current target. So in a mob where I'm currently tanking like that, and I'm hitting the second mob, I can then use this macro to interrupt the third one. And because you guys can't see melee interrupts on screen, I would just have you pretend to understand that spear hand strike, the interrupt is actually, once again, crackling jade lightning. So just notice what happens. I am tanking the second one. I want to interrupt my focus without swapping off the second target that I'm DPSing. Look what happens when I press the macro one. It crackling jades, which is the interrupt on the third unit frame here, which is the focus, which is the caster. But if I do not have a focus and I type slash clear focus, no space by the way, it then defaults to using crackling jade on whatever my current target is. In this case, it can be my interrupt as well, interrupting the current target. So that's a focus kick macro. It's super important in Mythic Plus. It will take your game to the next level. And I've already made a video on this like at the launch of Dragonflight. And you can find links in the description to that video below. So the upcoming macros we're gonna cover in this video, you can find a copy and paste from that Google Doc that I mentioned, and the link to that Google Doc is in the description. So that is focus interrupt macro. Naturally, all you need to do is just change to your class interrupt ability here. Okay, now let's talk about another very useful target modifier. And this time around is add cursor. Add cursor is immense in terms of helping you save one click for important abilities you need to cast. A good example is something like using Ring of Peace. When you use Ring of Peace, you can see normally clicking the ability of binding it, let's say I bind it to number two, okay? I press number two, it will have this targeting reticle and you need to click left and then it confirms and then the spell is used. Way too slow. In Mythic Plus, you have no time to just like wait for stuff to happen that split second could have killed you. So anything with a targeting reticle, like for example, a Frost Mage, Blizzard, a Death Knight says Death and Decay, a Monk's Ring of Peace, all these has a targeting reticle by default, but you can actually skip that with a macro. And that is the add cursor macro that is super powerful. So all you need to do is go to the condition and type add cursor, and you don't need any conditions because add cursor will always be true in the game, right? And then you go, Ring of Peace. Using the trick I showed you earlier, hold down shift, left click on this, it types it for you, click save. Okay, now see what happens when I use number one. We earlier know what happens when I use number two. Just to demo, number two, which is the default ability from the spell book, I press two, the targeting reticle appears. Now I'm gonna press one and I want my Ring of Peace to appear in my cursor and I'm gonna place it in between the third and the fourth dummy over here. So if everything goes correctly, the center of my Ring of Peace is going to be in between these two dummies. So I press one. See, I don't even have that reticle to ask me to confirm the ground. It simply just spawns immediately. And that will save you a precious few seconds that would potentially have killed you if you basically hesitated. So that is another very powerful targeting modifier the add cursor macro. Now you have seen add mouse over, now you have seen add cursor, you have also seen add focus. Suddenly this list of all the target modifiers is starting to make sense, right? You can start to think about all these useful cases for add player that targets the player 
at target, that targets the player's current target, at cursor, at focus, at target's target, which actually can be very useful. A good example is that, let's say you are healing as a healer, let's say a mythic plus, and you are currently targeting your main tank, right? Because he's getting, you know, demolished by the boss. So your current target is on the main tank and you want to continue to target your tank so you can use abilities to heal him up. But you also want to be able to contribute with your DPS. Let's say you play a Holy Paladin. You want to be able to use Crusader Strike on the boss so that you can build up Holy Power to spend on healing your tank without swapping off your tank as target. So this is where at target target comes in. Through your current target, you are able to then use a macro to target your target's target, which is the boss, so you can DPS. Then you have other matters like boss one, boss two, boss three, first unit in the boss frames. If you don't understand what this is, turn on your boss unit frames. Go to, let's say LVI, go to unit frames, turn on the boss unit frames. And at boss one is a macro that always targets the first boss. And you can have boss two or three if, let's say, it's a council fight and there's multiple bosses. Then you have at arena one. You can also do this for at arena two, arena three. So let's say you're playing 3v3 all the time. This can be very helpful macros that helps you target uh, the specific arena players. At pet is self-explanatory. It targets the player's current pet. But with that, yeah, you should understand every single target modifier now. Okay, now let's move on to cover another type of modifiers. So we've talked about target modifiers so far. We have talked about conditional so far. Here's another principle for you to learn in macros, and that is key modifiers. Just scroll down on that wallhead article I referenced. List of key modifiers. You might have guessed it. It's basically shift, alternate, and control, meaning you can set conditions to be true for when you hold down certain modifier keys on your keyboard. Okay, so with the list of modifiers present here, let's create a key modifier macro together where dependent on what modifier keys I hold down on my keyboard and I press the relevant keybind, a different action will take place. And I like to use the ring of peace example still, but just know that this can apply to all sorts of abilities like death and decay, anything under the sun really. So let's say I want to go slash use, open square bracket, mod shift, comma, add player. Remember, add player is our target modifier. So you can combine a key modifier with a target modifier. And I wanted to cast ring of peace dead center on my character. So I include ring of peace. Then I want to add in a second condition. So second square bracket. And this second square bracket goes add cursor, ring of peace. Okay, so what do you think will happen here? The game will basically read if I as a player has shift held down when I press this macro, which is one. So shift plus one would make the game cast ring of peace on my character. If I don't press shift down and I just press one, it will cast ring of peace at my cursor. All right, I made a slight tweak here. Instead of mod shift, I use mod alternate because I just realized that I bound shift to something else, more specifically shift one, but I hidden the action bar so you guys won't see it. But anyway, let's say I use mod alternate at player. So if I hold down alternate and I press one, it should appear on my player, Ring of Peace. And look at my mouse cursor, I'm putting it far away here, right? So let's press Alt 1. You can see Ring of Peace is being cast directly on myself as a player. Now, let's let Ring of Peace come back up in 30 seconds, and I'm gonna not hold down alternate and just press 1. What you should see is that Ring of Peace should be cast now on my cursor to the right. Let's come back up. I'm not holding down alternate, I just press 1. See, it appears at my cursor now, right? So this is what I mean by having modifier keys that allows you to do different kinds of action dependent on what key by modifiers you're holding down. And you can even modify this for multiple spells. And I'll give you a very good example. Let's say I have two mobility abilities as a monk. And for some of you, you play classes with multiple mobility abilities, right? And you only want to assign one keybind for all your mobility spells. You can do so. So what I can do is I go mod alternate, comma, at player, and then I go Tiger's Lust, which allows me to cast a movement speed boost on myself or any allies. So the first condition is if I hold down alternate and I press the keybind assigned to this macro, it will cast Tiger's Lust at the player, which is me. And then I put a semicolon and then I go empty condition. I would cast my second mobility ability, which is roll. Click on roll, click save. Now what this means is when I press alternate one, it should cast Tiger's Last on me. You'll see a buff appear on my feet. And when I just press one by itself without holding alternate, I should roll forward. So let's try that. I will now 
move forward, hold alternate and press one. You can see Tiger's last is being cast on me. Now, if I basically let go of alternate and I press one, I should roll, which is what I'll do now. You can see I roll. I basically used one single keybind for two movement abilities. And that saves you keybinds. It's a very nifty trick. And once you understand this concept, the possibilities are endless. Give you an example. Let's say you play a Pharaoh Druid or you play a Rogue. You can have different modifiers like alternate, shift, control, and they are using different finishers for your combo point. And so let's say you have different finishers or spenders. They're all categorized as spenders of your combo point. You can use shift, alternate, control to basically dictate just with one keybind which finisher you want to use. Same thing as tanks. You can use that one button and just by tweaking the spells here, Tiger's Last and Roll, you can dictate, okay, what spenders do you want to spend your class resource on? And so your spenders will always be bound to a single keybind. It's that powerful. And you can be really creative with key modifiers as well. It doesn't have to be abilities. It can be even for items like mounts. All right, so I'll give you an example. Let's say I want to have a single keybind for three different mounts. So I have mod alternate, which means if I hold down alternate, press my keybind, I want to be able to cast my dragon riding mount, which is the cliffside wilder drake. And then I have my own, let's say my repair mount, which is my yak. I can then go, okay, mod, control, hold down shift, left click this to instantly paste the name. So you don't have to type, right? And then by default, if I don't use any modifiers, I want it to use my default M plus mount, which I love this very small, um, mount here called the Grove Warden. So I can see exactly where I'm going. I don't butt pull stuff by mistake. Save. Now, what this means is when I hold down alternate and I press one, it will summon my dragon riding mount. You can see that's my dragon riding mount, right? And then now imagine I'm in M plus and someone says, hey, anyone have a repair mount? And I go, yeah, sure, me. I hold down control. You can see this icon changes and I basically mount up to use the Grand Expedition yet. Really simple. And then let's say the person has finished repairing and we're about to start our M plus run. I get on my default M plus mount by not holding down any modifiers and I press one. Now I'm mounting on my Grove Warden, the very tiny mount that I love to use in M plus. So that's that. You can use this modifier macro to have multiple mounts on just one keybind. So you can go nuts with all the possible combinations here. Before the next section, if you love the guide so far, hit the subscribe button. More of such guides coming your way. All right, earlier I showed you how you can use macros to have multiple abilities or items that is bound to a single key. And building more on that, what if you had talents, similar to let's say my druid here, where it's an either or situation. For example, in the druid talent tree for dragonfly, you can pick either in cap raw or you can pick mighty bash. Both are crop control option. One is a stun, single target, one is a disorient and it's AOE. What if I wanted a macro that will work regardless of whether I pick in cap raw or mighty bash? And depending on what I pick, whenever I press that same keybind, it would use that crop control. This is where we introduce another function in macros and it's another type of conditional. And by the way, heads up, this conditional is not updated on the wow hit article yet because I guess the article is dated and this is really in Dragonfly only. So just follow along in this tutorial on screen. The function basically goes like this. It says known and then you type the spell name or you can use the trick I showed you where known is in cap raw, which basically says, okay, if I know in cap raw, then I would use in cap raw when I trigger the macro. And then we can use the semicolon that I taught you earlier and now the condition is known and I know it's mighty bash. So I'm just going to type it and use mighty bash if it's true. Okay, so now I'll bind it to my keybind number one. If you notice my talent tree right now, I have in cap raw selected, right? And basically it says, oh, use this ability glows, right? You can see that. So if I swap to mighty bash, basically this macro will auto update, right? Because we use the show two tip function that I taught you at the start of this video. If you see the icon update, you can see it's now updated to Mighty Bash. If I just move over, you can see that the Mighty Bash icon lights up because I'm now in range. So just to demonstrate to you, if I press one, it basically bashes a target dummy over here. As simple as that. Then now I just wait for my cooldown for Mighty Bash to come back up. And then I'll swap back to Incap Raw and I'll press one and it will work the exact same way. It will just use Incap Raw. So let me swap back to Incap Raw here. I'll demonstrate it to you. Okay, you can see this button will change dynamically. I move over to these and I use one again. I Incap Raw and AOE on all the target dummies over here. It's as simple as that. All right, the next thing I want to cover is basically a one button burst macro. 
a lot of DPS players probably will find this useful. So let's say you have multiple abilities where they share around the same cooldown. So you want to use them all together at once whenever they're up. And sometimes that includes trinkets as well. So a one button macro is actually quite popular. You might have heard of it in PvP, but it works for PvE as well. So let's say I'm on my Blood DK and I know that there's certain abilities that happen to line up in terms of cooldowns. And I want to use all of them at the same time because it's more efficient that way. I want to use Abomination Limb. This is a two minute DPS cooldown. And I also want to use it alongside Empower Rune Weapon, which is also a two minute cooldown that is a DPS gain, 15% haste, more resource generation. And I want to pair it up with my Race Dead ability where I summon a pet, also two minute cooldown. Now let's also assume that for some whatever reason, I have a two minute cooldown trinket. In this case, I only have a one minute 30 uh, cooldown trinket, but I'm gonna assume, just, just imagine, okay, that I equip a two minute DPS trinket. I wanna use all of them at the same time. So what I can do, and this is where you start to understand how to use trinkets in macros as well. So trinkets can be used by a macro by putting in the item slots. So this is item slot 13, the trinket on top, and this is item slot 14. So if I go use 13, use 14, the game will attempt to click and activate on both my trinkets. And then I also want to add the other abilities that we talked about, which is Abomination Limb, hold down shift, left click, don't have to type that, use. The next one is Power Rune Weapon, and the next one here is Race Dead, save it. Okay, when you write one button DPS macros, one of the more important things to keep note of is you want to put all the off GCD stuff on top. Because remember the macro reads top down. So let's say you put on the first line an ability that requires a trigger of the GCD. Then suddenly the game will halt at the first line because it will be like, okay, we got to trigger and wait for the GCD. And then I wouldn't execute the remaining lines. So you put all the off GCD stuff on top first. So it keeps going, keeps going, keeps going all the way down until you finally meet something that requires a GCD. So Let's say I bind this, this macro, and let's say I bind it to number one. And I'll put my character pane to the side here, okay? And you guys note the cooldown whenever I press one. Note the cooldown on the trinket. So let's say I go to a target dummy here. I want you to note the cooldown of Empower Rune Weapon, Abomination Limb, and basically summon my pet, as well as my trinkets. So I go over here to this dummy, and I basically spam my one button macro. Take note, I've basically used all these three DPS two minute cooldown, alongside my trinket over here. So this is basically a one button DPS macro. You just have to replace all these spells with whatever uh, cooldown abilities that lines up for your class or spec. Okay, now with any pet classes, including let's say DKs, Hunters, Warlocks, we'll talk about a macro that is very handy and it's called the slash pet attack macro. How it works basically is you want to add slash pet attack to all your basic abilities. In the case of a Death Knight, let's say I want to bind it to Blood Boil. Actually, you know what? I'll put it to Marrow Ren. It's probably easier because Blood Boy has a recharge. And basically, you want a macro pet attack to all your commonly used abilities to ensure that your pet does not slack. Because in World of Warcraft, the pet AI isn't like, you know, a genius. Sometimes the pet will just bug out and just space out somewhere, but you can use the slash pet attack macro or command to tell it to attack the current target. And so when you bind it to your core abilities, you're always telling it to attack the current target. So it doesn't like space out and it saves you a bit of DPS. It's min-max stuff, but it helps in the long run. So I'll give you an example. Show two tip slash pet attack, and then slash use marrow ren. Click save, and I'll bind it to one. So what happens now is if I summon my ghoul, and I summon my ghoul here, I go up to the dummy, and I basically press marrow ren, the macro, and you can see my ghoul will start attacking whenever I press the macro marrow ren, because there's a slash pet attack. And let's say I swap to this, and you'll see my ghoul running over here to hit this. Swapping over to this, you can see my ghoul swapping over to hit this target over here. Another very nifty macro is slash start attack. What does this do? So let's say you're about to pull the boss and it's a raid and your raid leader has basically the rogue shrouding everyone up right up to the boss. Imagine this is the boss. This target dummy is the boss here. The raid leader has everyone shrouded right up to the boss and you have your right hand eating like Doritos or something. And your left hand is basically controlling your character, right? And you're shrouded and you're going all the way up next to the boss and you're in the shroud. Now the boss mod timer counts down to zero. By adding start attack, what this does is it forces the game to basically target the nearest enemy target to you and it will instantly start attempting to attack it and it will also use your ability. So look at where my mouse cursor is. I'll put my mouse cursor here, but if I go right up to this target dummy, you can see my mouse cursor is still there. All I'm doing is I'm gonna press the macro one. You can see 
when I press one, the game automatically finds the nearest dummy and it starts attacking it. Now, what if I cancel everything? I clear my target, right? Now I move over to the third one. And all I do, you can see my cursor is still up top. I press one. Again, it attacks the nearest. So that basically saves you a bit of time of having to click on this before you uh, hit your abilities. It just saves you a bit of that time. All right, next I want to talk about cancel spell queuing. So if you play some form of caster or some form of healer, you will know that when you're in the middle of casting a spell and basically your cast time has not been filled up yet, you can't cancel that halfway by pressing another ability. Meaning if you press another keybind, it wouldn't interrupt the cast and start using the keybind. And this is terrible because sometimes you want to use an oh shit button. So let's say, for example, I'm a paladin and let's say lay on hands is my oh shit button, right? Because lay on hands is a big heal. Let's just say that I'm in the middle of manually casting flash of light, which I bound um, as number two. And this is a 1.2 second cast time, but I want to use lay on hand as an oh shit button. But I don't want to be caught in a scenario where I'm channeling flash of light and I'm halfway through and I cannot cancel it by pressing my lay on hands keybind to immediately heal someone to full health. This is where cancel sequence macros are super useful. So how it works is you go show tooltip, you type slash stop casting, which basically interrupts your current cast. And just to be sure, you enter CQS, which stands for cancel Q spell. And if you're wondering why do you need this CQS command, it's because the way WoW works is based off spell queuing. For example, if you spam a keybind, towards the end of your current action, it queues up a spell. So sometimes your character is locked in already into a queued up spell. And even in that window where it's locked up into a queued spell, using your oh shit button, your character won't be responsive because the game is already queuing up your next spell. And therefore, if you have slash top casting slash CQS, it basically tells the game, hold whatever you're doing, prioritize slash use lay on hands. All right, now I'm going to drag this macro to number one. So what happens now is that let's say I target myself and I press number two, which is flash of light, the channel. I want you to take note that when I press flash of light and I'm casting on myself and I press one, which is basically our CQS macro and stop casting macro, in addition to basically using lay on hands on myself, it would interrupt this cast bar no matter where it is and cast lay on hands. So let's just demo it, shall we? Take note of the cast here. It starts casting, I press one, it cancels and it uses lay on hands. That is the power of using a CQS macro. And this stop casting CQS is great for all your top priority actions that you need to get out of the window. Action abilities that you cannot wait. You must use it in that split second. This is super helpful. Next up is basically abilities and announcement macros. So what does that mean? So for example, I'm a prod paladin and I'm about to use my biggest immunity, divine shield. When I use divine shield, I'm immune to all damage. Very long cooldown, 3.5 minutes, but it gives me immunity for eight seconds. One thing I can do is to say, go to this next line and you say, I'm immune for eight seconds. And so when I bring this macro to one, and when I use my divine shield, it will announce to everyone that I'm immune for eight seconds. You can see that. Why is this useful? For example, you play a protection warrior and you want to spell reflection the next cast on you. You can basically bind a macro that says, use spell reflection, slash say, my spell reflection is up, don't interrupt next, or something to those like. In parks, this is helpful, especially if you are not using voice comms to communicate. Just a useful tip here. The other thing that I want to cover is basically name specific macros. So let's say you always raid or do mythic plus with the same people. You can actually use add player names in order to get your cast off. So let's say you play a priest and power infusion is something that everyone wants from you, right? Because it's a DPS game. Or let's say you play a druid and you have innovate and your healer is always asking, can you innovate me? You can go slash use at the person's name. Let's say quasi, close the bracket and go power infusion. Now, naturally I'm on my paladin. So when I save, it's a question mark. You get the point if I use flash of light, save. And now when I put it on the first keybind, it will always attempt to cast flash of light on this person's name. So maybe I'll demo it with this shammy here, this unknowing Shammy. So I'll change it to his name, Lost Fuzz, right? Just imagine Flash of Light is changed to Innovate or Power Infusion. Let's say I bind it here, right? Okay, so now I invited him to my party, right? So this macro will now work. He must be in your party naturally. So let's say I'm targeting this thing, right? I'm attacking this thing 
And when I press one, even though my target is on the target dummy, it will attempt to cast a heal on him. You can see the heal is being cast on the chamois, even though my current target is on this target dummy. So that's the power of having an add name macro and change flash of light to whatever you want. Okay, next is a cancel aura macro. So why do you need to do cancel aura macros? So this is very helpful for mages, hunters, paladins, anyone that has a immunity. Cancel aura, ice block. Basically, if you have this macro, what it does is Imagine you are about to pop an immune to avoid death to a mechanic, but the mechanic has already happened. Imagine you are a mage and you're just sitting there waiting for your ice block to expire and you can't do anything in the meantime, right? Same as a hunter. You can use this macro slash cancel aura to immediately remove your immunity and go back to DPSing the boss. So it saves you that little bit of time. But it's also a very nifty trick if you raid or you do M plus with a paladin. And it also involves the cancel aura. So they have this thing where they can give you a blessing of protection. So let's say I take blessing of protection here. Now blessing of protection basically cleanses a bleed from your allies. As you can read from the tooltip, it grants immunity to physical damage and harmful effects. So if it's a physical bleed, this will instantly cleanse it. However, the problem is as a tank, if you have blessing of protection on you, even though you have aggro on the mobs, the mobs will go over and melee someone else because you have physical immunity. So the mobs won't attempt to melee you when you have blessing of protection, which is a very bad idea. So in this case, what you can actually do is you can have a cancel aura macro for blessing of protection. And you go cancel aura, blessing or protection. And you can even macro it with, let's say judgment, right? Which is a very core rotational ability. So I want you to take note now, let's say you're DPSing a mob, right? You are basically in M plus, you're tanking, and then suddenly you have like five stacks of bleed. You can call for a bop from your paladin friend in your party. In this case, let's say it's just myself, right? I'm just gonna bop myself. And then once I bop myself, I can press one to cancel. You can see the bop is gone, right? Whenever I use judgment, it basically checks for, do you have the aura? And I'll cancel the aura if you have it. And that way you get a free cleanse from the bop without risking anyone dying because the mobs decided to go melee someone else because you know the blessing of protection buff is still on you as a tank. Very handy. All right, now I want to cover spec specific macros. So if you play a druid, you probably know my pain. You have all these specializations, right? Specialization one is balance, two is feral, three guardian, four resto. And they all have their own form, right? Bear form, feral form, moonkin form, tree form. There's actually a way to have just one keybind for you to shift into any form dependent on what your spec is. And this is where I introduce another conditional to you. So let's pull up the trusty macro we have been working with throughout the entire video. And basically go slash use, open square bracket, spec one, which corresponds to Moonkin, and I'll use Moonkin form, semicolon, second condition, spec two, by the way, is spec colon two, spec colon one, just to be clear. Shift into cat form, and then we'll do spec colon three, bear form, and then we'll do spec colon four, three and form. So what this does is that dependent on what I'm currently spec into, it shifts me into the relevant form. So right now I'm guardian, right? When I press this macro over here, I will become a bear. Now that I'm feral, if I press the macro one here, I become a cat. And now I'm in balance spec, right? If I press one, I will become a moon kid. And so that's it. If you like this guide and you want to show your support, consider subscribing to our Patreon. Link is in the description. That helps me make more videos that you love. Also a shout out to all our Patreon supporters on the screen right now. Thanks for keeping the channel going. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you want more guides like that. And also you can check out other masterclass guides on WoW setups, UI, and everything customization and settings via the playlist on the screen over here. Thanks for watching. See you soon.